Good evening. This is Felicity. I am speaking to you from my library. And this evening I have decided to present um, my collection of Joseph Campbell, which is obviously not complete. Well, it's not complete because I have uh, many more to find, um, but I only started really looking for Joseph Campbell a couple of years ago, um, 2019 maybe. I um, was reading something else and decided, well, you know, my, my father used to read Joseph Campbell. Well, I don't know really very much about it. Why don't I find out something? I've got a, a little book. I have a little book, which actually I have here, which I'll show you. This is, so, this is the first actual, the first one that really actually came into my library. It was the mythic image. And um, I got it probably because it was a picture book and because it was very inexpensive. And um, because I thought I would just kind of like dip my toes in the Campbell water. Well, that was, uh, that was several oceans ago. And I'm going to come back to this one in just a minute. Um, what I decided to do is I was going to read the Masks of God. I have, um, I had one of the copies. I had um, this guy, the first of the series. So the first thing I did was to to go and, and find the rest of them. Okay, well, we can, we can do this. I thought, well, you know, what's the worst that can happen? I'm going to be bored or it's going to be too hard for me to read or whatever. Um, and it turned out to be one of the most amazing books that I read for the whole year. I mean, I read, I read quite a bit. Uh, I think that was uh, that was uh, twenty. That was last year. I read a lot, and um, Campbell stands out as being one of the most interesting, uh, fascinating uh, books, authors that I read, and determined that I was definitely going to read more. So, I have been acquiring a variety of others, learning a little bit more about Campbell and his life and his work. Clearly not um, everything by any stretch of the imagination, but certainly enough to get going. And I'm a huge fan of his now, and so why not do a little uh, video of my appreciation for Joseph Campbell and his work um, by having a Joseph Campbell in my library video. Here it is. So again, um, I started off with the Masks of God. Um, this is four volume series, the Primitive Mythology, um, Show them number one. Oriental mythology. I, for some reason, I did not get the same edition on all of them, but uh, wouldn't it be nice to have this one? It's just this one happened to come into my library with this hardback. So, Oriental mythology, um, Occidental mythology, which is volume three and is the one that speaks the closest to our culture because it is about the the the, the west the Western uh, myth, us. And then the last one is the mass is the uh, creative creative mythology. So, I'm. My my normal my normal um, habits are uh, very scattershot. I've mentioned this before. Very scattershot, and um, um, and I tend to to dip in and out of books. I'm uh, the the forest of bookmarks. The um, the all the books all the time. I find it very hard to really focus and uh, stick to one big huge thing until it's done. Smaller books, fine. I little little short stories or or, or short uh, fictions are not really a problem but I get I get bored <laughs> oh dear I didn't say that you didn't hear me say that <laughs> but there it is so I started in on um, I started in on the uh, on the primitive mythology I think it was in um, the January or some some time early on in uh, early on in 2021 uh, and I couldn't put it down. That was a really interesting experience. I started reading and I just, well, what's going to happen next? I just had to keep on reading. It's everything, everything that I've ever been interested in for my whole life. I mean, reading, of course, but um, the, the reading is only is only really a part of it. I, I, I became entranced with mythology f at a very early age and then somehow that kind of went away things happen, you go on, you do other educational things in your life. And um, that came back this, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try this out. And it was riveting. I couldn't put it down. So primitive mythology, oriental mythology, occidental mythology, create, I just, each book, I put it down and I would kind of think for a little bit and I would just move right on to the next volume. Amazing. So that was a that was a real experience, not just because Joseph Campbell was a great writer and he had a lot of really great ideas and he was a great thinker, but because it was because it was very well written and because it absolutely spoke to me from beginning to end. 
that was amazing. And I think my 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 initial reflection, my like aphorisms and little little quips and little little one-liners to 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 uh, describe whatever it is that, to try to encapsulate it in one small sentence. As I think the 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 overriding sensation that I had after finishing the masks of God was that um, uh, I he describes it as as sitting on a whale fishing on the ocean and for me it was like sitting on the leviathan joseph campbell was a leviathan fishing for whales and he describes all the whales and the ones that got away and the ones that he caught that i was able to catch were um memorable so there you go i did read this very recently so i've read the entire masks of god and i couldn't put them down it took me the best part of a month to read it and uh that was experience that i would like to actually have again um but after i finished this i decided that i needed to find out a little bit more about joseph campbell and maybe do some uh maybe do some 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 deeper deeper exploration maybe read some of his other works before i ventured back in um i like rereading I reread all the time but it seemed to me that this one would be better served the masks of god would be better served by me um by me having a better understanding of of, of what joseph campbell was about so here's the rest of it <laughs> So I, after that, I decided that I was going to, to try some, some other things. So the mythic image um, was the next one that came to hand. This is, uh, this is a little bit tattered. I obviously I've got this used. I did not do this to the book myself. It's a paperback, but pretty nice one. Um, the Bullingen series, which this is, you can see, this is the Bullingen series from the Princeton University Press. I like what I've seen of theirs. I have uh, the Bullingen Plato and I think a couple of other ones. Um, really nice productions, nicely printed. This one was used, and so it tells me that I paid ten dollars for it. There you go. Um, it's not the most perfect copy in the world. It's had, it's definitely had some. Uh, it's definitely suffered a little bit from the slings and arrows of misfortune and humidity, um, but it's, it was, uh, it was worth, it was worth it for that, and it does not bothering me right now at all. Glad I have it. So. <laughs> The first thing is I open up the book and uh, here's the introduction. Okay, this gotta be oh, I think there's gonna be a lot of mythos going on. There's gonna be a lot of stories. There are, but the very first thing that he says in the introduction, the preface to this volume, and it is by him, uh, 1973, and he says in the very big opening of the preface, he said, "Pictures invite the eye not to rush along." but to rest a while and dwell with them in enjoyment of their revelation. In the fashioning of this book, therefore, my thought has been to let the spirit of the pictures rule and to arrange it so that the reader might enter into its pages it in turn he liked. The mythic themes illustrated are interpreted in the chapters, which are designed rather as settings for the works of art than as independent arguments. Yet there is also an argument developed which the reader need not, yet may, decide to add to his enjoyment of the visual forms. All right, I'm hooked. <laughs> Lovely. So I picked a couple of examples. The, the book is absolutely chock about Every page, there is no page that does not have a picture of some interest um, for mythology, for the mythos, for um, cultural anthropology, for uh, what whatever illustrated um, the overriding themes that Joseph Campbell was always talking about. So, for example, here is a, here is a, um, an, uh, they do actually say um, what, what they are from eventually. Well, this is, this is a, as a statuette, Quetzalcoatl, um, the Lord of Life. And there's this, there's a story that goes along with it. So there's a whole, there's a whole legend then, the legend of the fe feathered serpent. So you, you could look at the picture and just say, you know, I'm not going to read any words because there's the word side of my brain. And then there's the picture side of my brain. And I've decided I'm going to look at the picture side. Well, I find it really hard just to do the picture side if I've got words because, because I read. Um, so yeah, I'm, 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 I, will, I do dip in and out, which is a wonderful thing. Um, uh, and then some of the pictures, oh, I wish, you know, yeah, I'm, not a product of it. I'm not a product of this entry here, but um, having become very used to um, the internet and having 
incredibly high quality pictures available at the flick of my finger. It is a little weird. I'm sitting here with a picture going like, wow, this is amazing. This is Quanon. Can't I, can't I make it a little bigger and see the details? No, that's actually not going to happen. Um, but this one, when I turn to this, uh, Quanon is uh, one of my uh, one of my favorite uh, goddesses. Uh, she appears in a number of different um, East Asian mythologies uh, and religion. And this story is one that I remember having read somewhere else, and it's it's beautiful. And excuse me, while I read it to you, um, it is. So the, the the picture that was just that was that was shown here was Quanon, which is early eighth century from Japan. Uh, and a brief note before the legend of the Bride of Mero is that in China and Japan, the feminine aspect of the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara is emphasized in the character of Quan Yin, Japanese Quanon, of whose universal compassion the following legend is told. The Legend of the Bride of Mero In a certain rural western province of old China, there was a time when the Buddha, his law, and his order was disdained and men devoted themselves rather to riding swift horses and to archery. But the merciful Bodhisattva showered her compassionate benevolence upon them and led them in the following way to the Dharma. In one of the villages of that province, situated on the banks of a remote upper reach of the Yellow River, there appeared early one summer day a strange young woman of the greatest beauty and most noble grace. Her almond eyes jet black flashed from beneath slender brows that were like little bows and the lovely oval of her placid face was framed by soft waves of blackest hair. She carried a basket in her hands woven of bamboo lined with green leaves of the willow and filled with fresh golden scaled fish of the river. Moreover, as she called her wares, her voice suggested the play of a breeze among jade beads. The villagers stared and questioned each other, but none could say whence she had come or who she might be. She appeared to sway every morning, and as soon as her basket was emptied, would disappear so quickly that the people sometimes doubted that she had been among them at all. The young men, of course, having taken notice, daily watched for her appearances, and then one morning would not let her pass. They began begging her to marry them, but she answered, O oh, honorable young gentleman, I certainly do wish to marry, but I cannot marry you all. If there were one among you, however, who could recite by heart the entire sutra of the compassionate Kuan Yin, he would be the one I would wed. So deep was the darkness of the minds of those young men that they had never even heard of that sutra. Nevertheless, when evening came, they met and vied with each other and when dawn broke, there were thirty who had learned the text by heart. The young woman said when these then accosted her, But, O oh, honorable young gentleman, I am only one woman. I cannot marry thirty young men. However, if, there, if any one among you can explain the meaning of the sutra, he is the one I shall wed. The following dawn found ten youths waiting to claim the young woman's hand, for ten now understood. But she replied, O oh, young sirs, I am but one woman. I cannot marry ten husbands. However, if any one of you will in three days have experienced the meaning of the Sutra of the Compassionate Kuan Yin, him surely shall I marry gladly. And on the morning of that third day, there was waiting for her just one, the young Mero. And when she saw him there, she smiled. O oh, son of the house of me, she said, for she could recognize his bearing. I perceive that you have indeed realized the, the meaning of the Blessed Sutra of the Compassionate Kuan Yin, and do gladly accept you as my husband. My house you will find this evening at the river bend, and my parents there to receive you. And so, when evening fell, Merrill, alone at the bend of the shore, searched out and discovered her little house among the reeds and rocks. At its gate there were standing an old man and woman beckoning. He approached and said to them, I am the son of the house of Me, and have come to claim your daughter as my bride. To which the old man responded, We have been waiting for you a long time. 
and the old woman, leading the way, opened the door to her daughter's room, and Miro went in. But the room was empty. From the open window he saw a stretch of sand as far as to the river, and in the sand the prints of a woman's feet, which he followed to find at the water's edge two golden sandals. He looked about in the increasing twilight and saw no house now among the rocks. There was only a cluster of dry bamboo by the river, softly rustling in an evening breeze. And then, suddenly, he knew. The fisher maid had been none other than the Bodhisattva herself, and he comprehended fully how great is the merciful benevolence of the infinitely compassionate Kuan Yin. She made a bridge of love that he might cross to the shore of Bodhi. O oh, compassionate Avalokiteshvara, most benevolent. And ever since that time, in the rural western province, many have known and revered the Dharma of the Buddha. And that's another reason why I've become a complete and utter fan of Joseph Campbell, is that his books are just laden with these amazing stories, which he read, collected. I was reading in his, um, in his uh, very recent, just finished his um, uh, The Hero's Journey, where he, uh, where he is in fact talking about his life at the end of it, um, in a series of interviews and conversations uh, spanning over, I suppose, a few years. Uh, where he talks about, where he talks about some of, the, briefly about some of the things that uh, led him to the path of knowledge, which it did. Um, he said that so he had uh, gone off to Europe. He had a scholarship. He was studying. He met um, uh, James Joyce, or. He, I don't know if he, he doesn't actually mention having long conversations, but he definitely mentions having been completely bowled over um, by James Joyce's writing, Ulysses, and then Finnegan's Wake, which is a later book, which I have here to talk about. Um, but he, so he mentions, he mentions the course of his young, his youth, uh, his, his young scholarship, um, and coming back to the United States right, right when the Depression hit, the, 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 uh, the um, uh, crash of uh, Wall Street, um, the stock market, and uh, what to do? Well, he could have gone back to teaching again, but he decided that instead of doing that, that he was going to hold himself up in um, a far away, in, in, a, in, an, in an isolated place where he would not be disturbed, and he would read all day, all day long. That's all he was going to do. He was going to focus on reading and getting information, getting knowledge, reading the books that he might otherwise, in a professional life, never get a chance to read. Oh, my. There's a thing to dream about. So he he talk, he talks about the schedule that he set up for himself: read, read, read all day long, reading, reading, and in all those readings began uh, began the uh, the huge database, for want of a better name, the database of his mind that had thousands and thousands of these myths, and his mind is moving them around and putting them into categories and uh, separating them out again and putting them back into categories, and coming up with his. Uh, overarching um, philosophy or uh, uh, mind uh, world view um, of mythos because what he said that he found was is that uh, although they seemed on the surface to be so very different from culture to culture that in fact they were not and that all these cultures from the beginning of recorded history and before that even when we had only pictures and images of statues is that the myths portrayed, the uh, religions portrayed, have at their root the same ideas and the same journey, the same travel, the same adventure. And this was his. This uh, I read, uh, just recently finished, and right before that I finished The Hero with a Thousand Faces, and the two of them jumped right at each other because The Hero with a Thousand Faces is, is us. It is each one of us on our greater or lesser journey um, to find our own belief, our own happiness, our own myth, our own religion, whatever that is, sometimes harder than, than at others, and some journeys more significant or more memorable or with greater echoes. But really, when it comes right down to it, we are the hero with a thousand faces. We are the, we are the, the myth. We are in it 
and it is up to us to make sure that we understand what is going on. So then in his hero's journey, uh, he describes his own path through his journey. He is one of the heroes with a thousand faces. Those two together um, made me very happy because uh, I, I was struggling a little bit with the, the hero with a thousand faces because he's because it's so mythological and because uh, and because he has uh, so many so many uh, very important uh, myths that have he, he's he's uh, cleared them up in his own mind and he's kind of boiled them down and he's got them down to their essentials and here I am jumping in at the uh, jumping in at, at, with without that much knowledge in the end saying what is going on well he uh, I'm going to read it again clearly um, but he has each each chapter he introduces or each section he introduces with a with a uh, the prelude that, that describes what he's going to do uh, and then he does it and then he describes it at the end and then he goes on to the next so we have the adventure of the hero which is the, the different stages of the adventure the departure and all of its subsets the initiation the return the keys emanations the virgin birth transformations of the hero dissolutions myth and society um, so these are the, the the big these are the big pictures and then each of the big pictures has smaller pictures inside it and this one um yeah, this one has some of the pictures in it too um, but if you want the pictures you, you go you go back and you look at the uh, the mythic image or at the very end i'll show you my my pride and joy here my uh, my big old atlas of myth which is I don't think it's complete, but it's definitely fabulous. Um, so this is this is another uh, this is another of the Bollingen series, uh, the hero with a thousand faces. Uh, the hero's journey is the, from New World Library, and this is actually part of a concerted effort by um, the Joseph Campbell Foundation to publish all of the works not yet published and to present everything else that has already been published so these are uh this is i'll probably find more as i go along of the um, um of the uh the joseph campbell foundation those two now part of the reason why i eventually started on this 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 uh, joseph campbell acquisition journey was because I decided that I was going to read Finnegan's Wake again this year and read it without the benefit of scotch. <laughs> that was actually way of, it's more of a challenge. I have not finished it yet. Um, I am reading it uh, incredibly slowly. I think I read it in a great and crazy haze when I was in Ireland before. Uh, when I was in Ireland, I read Finnegan's Wake from cover to cover and it was pretty, pretty wild. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that I really hardly understood what was going on, but I wanted to get a picture of it, um, and I did. And then deciding that I was going to have a more mature, uh, some decades later, a more mature read-through of Finnegan's Wake and figure out what was going on, um, I did a little bit of research to see, well, who's written anything that might be helpful to me? It's a website that actually talks about some of the, Actually, there's a website that I found that does talk about um, the derivations of some of the words. What uh, James Joyce does with words is unbelievable. Um, he has these portmanteaus and ever portmanteaus and portmanteaus of portmanteaus where he's pushed together a lot of words and then he's squished them together and then he's squeezed out all the unnecessary juice and then he's like done it again uh, until he has these 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 sentences that walk one sentence that walks the entire book from beginning to end and then you go on to the next sentence well as i was doing that i ran across a reference to the skeleton key to finnegan's wake by joseph campbell and um his compatriot and this one was um um was uh, henry morton robinson so uh i i said well i'm how could i even find a copy of that well i go over to mo's and that was the first big um book buying adventure because not only did they have the skeleton key to Finnegan's Wake but they also had a dozen more books all of which I got they're massively heavy I've not finished reading all of them yet but that was the beginning and then I had a couple more expeditions to make sure that I had at least if I was going to read the pieces that I would have all of them together in that case it was an ask of God um, but I started reading started reading the skeleton key now this was um, published uh, this was published in 
1944. The copy I have has really terrible paper, but whoever had it before me was pretty careful because these pages rip when you think about them. Um, the wartime edition, full compliance with the government's regulations for conserving paper and other essential materials, as in the paper is crap. Oh dear. <laughs> but, um, but it is actually um, perfect. It's complete. Uh, and it is, uh, it is what I was looking for. So he, um, he just, he discusses, he discusses uh, here and elsewhere why he considers, uh, why he and his compatriot considered Finnegan's Wake such an incredibly important work. Um, and at the time of publication of this work in 1944, he says, five years ago, James Joyce released for publication the great manuscript of Finnegan's Wake, on which he had labored a third of his life. Apart from some penetrating critiques by a handful of reviewers and the enthusiasm of the faithful few who had long awaited the work, the public reception was one of massive indifference. What does it all mean? Why should we bother about a book so hard to read? And then Joseph Campbell proceeds to tell us. So um, I am, I am actually working through this. I could read it in a flash, but um, I am working through this book as I am working through Finnegan's Wake. So you can see just how far I've gotten in Finnegan's Wake. Um, the end of the year is not nigh. I have a, a, I have a little desert island episode coming up in my life in a couple of days. I shall be, um, I shall be home uh, and not able to work in a public setting for three, maybe four weeks, uh, while I recuperate from my skeletal enhancement. I'm having my new knees put in, so it's like just around the corner, Tuesday. <laughs> oh boy. Um, so I've got, I've got all these books in my library and I've got all these projects and I'm thinking, you yeah, know, maybe I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll simulate my early experience reading Finnegan's Wig with tons of beer and whiskey by uh, <laughs> reading more Finnegan's Wig with whatever drugs they give me at Kaiser to make me not feel the pain in my knees so much. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, but I was I was thrilled to find this. This was just like a one-off thing. Like, oh, hey, I doubt I'll find it. I'll just like go to Moe's and see and like, lo and behold, there it is. Come on, take it. <laughs> I'll take it. All right. So now we're getting into the area of, um, we're getting into the area of I haven't read, but clearly they're going to be next on my list. So this one, uh, this one came out kind of a while ago. This is a book publication uh, with the interview, the series that Joseph Campbell did with Bill Moyers on the power of myth. And uh, this one is, um, this one is, is this is a more contemporary um, publication, so the pictures are just a little bit. I still can't, <laughs> I still can't go like that, but the pictures are a little bit clearer and a little bit more in your face and pointed. Um, but the reason for getting this one was because I'm not probably not going to watch the interview, but I will definitely. I always read the book, and I will be reading this. This is um, this is pretty beautiful. This is. Um, it's a proper book, as they say, and it's uh, it's it's handsome, and the and the photographs are 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 reproduced um, with much more clarity. So I'm looking forward. It's probably the one I'm going to read next. And I may actually read this one instead of diving back into Finnegan's Wake because this is probably going to be a really pleasant and easy easier thing to read. Now I, I noted I just noted the uh, some some um, serendipity here on the front cover is uh, um, is an illustration of the the royal the royal emperor's dragon uh, from, from of, of China uh, and this is a this is an image that was only I'm going to put it up a little bit closer you are looking you are looking with me um, at this video from my new computer which I'm hoping was going to have amazing sound and I think the picture is better but we'll find out <laughs> because I'll be playing this back to you um, the image here um, is was only the the image here was only permitted to be to be worn by the emperors this was a piece of embroidery and I remember seeing this on a it's reproduced on a puzzle that we had as kids and later on when I discovered that I had some crafty instincts in me uh, embroidery is one of the things I did and I decided I was going to reproduce produce this dragon in embroidery which I did as a wedding gift for my um, husband <laughs> who appreciated it a lot and he still has it the kimono that I put it on died many many years ago but the embroidery lives on and it's been transferred to a couple of other garments and yeah so when I saw this I said oh, 
<laughs> thanks guys <laughs> how did you know that was the picture that would be uh, that would make me that would make me um, happy and and it does so everything so far about my my joseph campbell journey has made me happy and made me uh, made me made me remember things uh, from my past and my hopefully future to come um, that is uh, that is meaningful so i have three here that i have not read yet that i acquired at the same time as all those other books from those um, these are so this is two of them are for other new world library these are these are these are uh, from this uh, joseph campbell foundation uh, these are, uh, this one might have had a cover, I don't know, it didn't come with a cover, this one did. Uh, this is the Mythic Dimension Selected Essays, 1959 to 1987, and it is unread. I have not read them. This is going to be great. Uh, there are, uh, there are, uh, let's see, probably some, I may, I may recognize some things from his, uh, from his Mass of God, because those books that he published then, uh, were the culmination and again the, the sort of coalescing of all of his ideas and thoughts about various different subjects. So here we have mythology and history, comparative mythology is an introduction to cross-cultural studies. I'm unsold. <laughs> this is where has this been all my life? I don't know. Um, waiting for me, hopefully. Um, there. So there is a, there is a um, there's a great there's a, there's a little intro there that says yeah I want to read it. Haven't read it yet. Going to read it. Um, Flight of the Gander is not from the, uh, this is, this is, know, it's actually the Joseph Campbell Foundation says it is, um, but this was actually printed by, printed by Harper Perennial, uh, Flight of the Wild Gander, Explorations in the myth Mythological Dimension, uh, which uh, seems to me, it's got, it's got, it's got a lot of different kinds of things. It's, it's a, um, couched in a slightly different language. It was a much earlier printing this this was published in 1951 this was reissued in 19 1990 um and the paper is the paper's okay it's, it's starting to yellow a little bit it's kind of typical paperback material um but it's the one that i have so i shall be reading that one too although i think the essays might come first and the last one is um from the this is from the joseph campbell foundation and it is the new world library from Novato's publication and this is bakshish and brahman asian journals india looking forward to all three of those so again at the same time that i acquired those lovely ones i also acquired oh, a little lifting thing three volumes of the historical atlas of world mythology now i've tried to see if i've if this is complete whether there's any i'm missing and i kind of res resort usually to saying hey does mose have it if mose has it then there's a copy if they don't have it well they might um, or maybe it doesn't exist. So uh, this is, uh, I'm going to show you the three volumes that I have and then show you why they're so amazing. These are the ones that my dad had. Well, I did not get the copies. One of my siblings got the uh, Joseph Campbell um, historical atlas that we had in our family library. Um, but I've acquired these, so now I have them too. All right, this is the, this is volume two. And volume one is, um, here we go. So I'm seeing immediately a tie-in with my Mass of God reading, which is going to make me very happy. I will not have forgotten by the time I really dive into these, um, what was going on there. So this is the mythologies of the primitive hunters and gatherers. Uh, the part... Oh, no, I have to do a little show and tell here. <laughs> All right. Oof, they're so big, they're so heavy. So I, I did actually look into these and, and I, I realized as I was as I was as I was kind of dipping in for the first time that this was going to be one of those rainy day books because it's not only fabulous pictures. Oh my goodness, yes, fabulous pictures. Um, but every page it's beautifully laid out, so there's this, this graphic element to the pages as well. This was uh, the last thing I think that he was, one of the last things he was working on. And um, so the reproduction is beautiful in color, black and white in color, um, but the stories are all there. Um, so he's, again, he's, he's, he's putting in the stories, and the stories he's picked, clearly, I'm not going to be all of the stories, but the stories that, he, that he's picked um, are ones that are important to what he's trying to say, and then he's talking about them much as he does in the um, in the uh, uh, Hero of a Thousand Faces. Oh, look at those guys there! 
So with these pictures we've seen before and they come back, they are, they're coming back in increasingly more, increasingly beautiful reproductions as, um, as he's, as he's uh, gotten, desired to say that, say things again, or gotten a new idea of something he wanted to work on. Um, so these three books, uh, these may be the ones that I, um, that I, uh, look at and read during my my enforced um, my enforced hiatus at home. It's not like I don't have any shortage of things to read. It's like I'm really, I'll be sitting here at my library table. Hopefully, I'll be doing stairs sooner rather than later, and uh, I'll be sitting in my library saying, "So, what's going to take my mind off my knees?" Oh, I know. I'll read some myths that Joseph Campbell has presented. I think I'll read some myths that Joseph Campbell has presented. Um, and there they are. This is Joseph Campbell in my library. And I do appreciate your watching this video if you have watched this video all the way to the end. And I look forward to, to maybe doing a few more or more frequent videos than I have for the last month when I've been getting ready for my, um, uh, for my surgery. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again. And for now, I wish you a good evening and bye-bye.